Uh, hello. Uh, I wanted to derive for you here quickly um, the pseudo forces that arise for observers in a rotating frame. Um, and we can do that uh, just starting from this equation in blue. And uh, when I did that uh, before, I, I don't think I did a great job. <laughs> so I wanted to do it again for you now. And this uh, equation in blue uh, relates the time derivative uh, of a vector q in an inertial frame, S0, to the time derivative of the vector q in, as seen by observers in a rotating or non-inertial frame, S, um, uh, plus uh, a second term, um, uh, which has the angular velocity vector, um, which describes the rotation of the non-inertial frame, uh, the cross product of that vector and the vector Q. So uh, if a vector, say Q, is fixed in a rotating frame, uh, which is to say the middle term of these three uh, uh, would be zero, uh, and a, a, an inertial observer uh, would still see that vector change because that vector is rotating with the frame, basically. So you will still have the second term. Um, that is the change in the vector uh, resulting solely from the rotation itself. Um, and if that vector in the rotating frame is also changing, uh, that's this, this term, uh, both of those add together uh, as vectors uh, to give how the inertial observer uh, would, would see that vector changing. Um, this vector is really all we need. Uh, sorry, this equation is really all we need to, um, to derive the pseudo forces that are seen by observers in accelerating frames. Um, and because it's all we'll, we'll need, we're going to give it a name and we'll call it equation A and it'll come up later uh, again. So we can start uh, by writing this equation uh, for when the vector q here is, the, is a radius. And so that's what I show here. And that relates the, the, uh, a velocity in the inertial frame to the uh, velocity of an object in the rotating frame, uh, plus the cross product of the angular velocity vector and the uh, uh, position of that thing in the uh, uh, rotating frame. Uh, if this is a situation where uh, the non-inertial frame is is uh, is us observers on the surface of the Earth trying to do physics, um, this uh, uh, angular velocity is 7.3 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, radians per second. That's uh, the, the angular velocity of the Earth and its direction is given by the right-hand rule. Uh, so this uh, gives a relationship between uh, the velocity, two velocity vectors as viewed in these two different frames. And this guy is the, this describes the rotation uh, um, between these two frames and the rotation is an acceleration because it's changing the direction of a vector. Um, so uh, uh, to proceed to calculate what forces are, we obviously will need to know what accelerations are. Uh, so we're going to take this relationship between the velocities here, and we're going to take a, a, another time derivative of it again. Um, and uh, that's what we're doing on this uh, line here. And so we have this a second derivative of the position vector in the inertial frame. Um, it, and uh, that time derivative on the right-hand side is thus the time derivative of this thing. Um, and so you see it there. Um, and uh, for convenience, and so we don't make some silly algebra mistakes, uh, this complicated thing in brackets, um, we're going to, for now, it, it's another vector. It's just another vector. And uh, we're going to call it Q for now. And so we're going to make this definition. And uh, th thus, uh, this equation here uh, brings us right to this point, right this, right there, with uh, Q defined uh, as this uh, thing in brackets. All right, so we're here. Um, but then we can use equation A again, and which tells us exactly 
uh, what will happen if you want the time derivative of something in an inertial frame. There, there's the equation right there. Um, and so basically that just means we have to, we, we then have the time derivative of that thing in the rotating frame plus the angular velocity cross that, that, that thing. Um, and um, so then we can, we're now going to have to do some algebra. Now it's time to, to, to get dirty. And so we're going to take this, uh, this Q that we had just defined. We're actually going to put it in there where it belongs. And so, so here it is going in to the inside of this bracket and going into the inside of this bracket. And you can identify that this whole bit here is, is just this term. And this whole bit in that direction is just this term. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to distribute these derivatives and we're going to, we're, we're going to use the product rule when we have to. And so we start here and um, we end up with the time derivative in the rotating frame of the time derivative of the position in the rotating frame. So that's just the second derivative. So that thing is uh, now here, the second derivative of the uh, position in the rotating frame. This is the acceleration in the rotating frame. Uh, and then we distribute this derivative to that thing. So uh, there it is here. Uh, and now we've got to distribute this uh, cross product. And so uh, we get this bit um, gives us that. And then, good Lord, we have the angular velocity cross uh, this. So we have a double cross product here. Um, OK. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, now we, we recognize that this bit right here is the time derivative of a product. Uh, so we can use the uh, product rule, which is uh, BDA plus ADB. Um, so where A is uh, the angular velocity and B is this. So uh, the derivative of the first guy cross the second gives us this term. And then we have the uh, angular velocity cross. Now we take the derivative with respect to the second guy, and that's this term. Okay. Uh, fine. So uh, you you will notice though that we have uh, this term here from the applying the product rule to this term, but we have also exactly that same term right here from from here. So we have two of these terms, in fact, as you'll see in a second. Um, OK, so uh, now uh, we, we are obviously interested in the motion in the rotating frame. Uh, um, we want to understand these pseudo forces that that the observers in the rotating frame will see. So for our, it, we can you know, with just exactly like we've been doing this whole class, we can use this uh, dot uh, notation. Um, to, to simplify the calculation and to make the form that we're going to end up with a little more clear. Um, so, you know, the, the derivative with respect to time in the rotating frame, we're going to call that uh, Q vector dot. And the second derivative with respect to dt squared, we're going to call that uh, Q double dot. We've been doing this a long time. Okay, so now we're just going to write all this out. And uh, um, so the first term uh, was here, and that makes it just like it did before. Uh, then, then we have uh, this term here, which is here. That's the time derivative in the rotating frame of the angular velocity vector, which is interesting. Um, so, th so that uh, omega uh, vector dot cross r is this term. And then, as I said, we have these two terms. There's two of them. Uh, so that's this guy. And uh, finally, we have this double cross product that uh, from before. OK, so that's all the terms. Um, and, and then we can multiply through by the mass. And we can also use our familiar terms uh, that, that a vector is the second derivative of the position vector in the rotating frame. You could also, we could, if we want, call this our uh, r double dot. Um, uh, and the velocity is the first derivative of the position. Likewise, that would just be r dot. OK. Um, so we're just going to use these uh, just so the form of these equations is very clear. And we've multiplied uh, through uh, by masses. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, so what we end up with on the left is the mass times uh, the acceleration d d2 uh, d2 r vector dt squared in the inertial frame. That's this. And we had multiplied through by the mass. So that's how we get this term. This is indeed the, uh, this is the sum of all the forces in the inertial frame. These are the quote unquote real forces um, that, that uh, um, you did physics with in, in freshman physics and before. Um, and that equals um, the acceleration times the mass in the rotating frame. That, that's this term here. Sorry. Uh, plus, uh, good Lord in heaven, look at these uh, uh, wackadoodle terms. We have three of them. Uh, um, and let's uh, note that all three of them are zero if the rotating frame is not rotating. <laughs> these are um, these forces result solely from the kinematics of the two frames. They are not actual forces. Um, although they are felt by uh, any observer inside the rotating frame, they're absolutely real forces, and they cause motion to be altered as a result. Um, but the uh, inertial observer doesn't call them um, a real force because he knows that they will cease to exist if that frame stops rotating. The inertial observer sees those rather as accelerations than forces. Um, OK, so uh, what we're going to do then to, to get this into the final form we need is we're going to move all three of these uh, terms uh, here uh, over to the other side of the equation so that they will all be on the side with the, um, the uh, net force in the inertial frame. So here's the net force in the inertial frame. And then here's all, here's all these other three terms that are now on the other side. And here is the sum of the... Uh, the mass times the acceleration in the rotating frame, which is the thing we're interested in. This will tell us the equation of motion, if we can get this guy, right? Okay, now uh, I just told you I brought all three of these crazy terms over to the other side, but you see them here on the other side with plus signs, and you may be saying, dude, you just made three sign errors, and that would not be a surprise, as you know. Uh, but in this case, um, there's no sign error. Uh, what I've done, um, and it's not uh, universal that people do this, so watch out for this. What I've done is I've replaced the order of these two vectors in each of these cross product to eat that minus sign. So um, it would be minus, it would be minus m, uh, it would be minus m omega, uh, omega dot cross r. Th those two terms are equivalent. You will quite often I've seen minus two m omega cross v for the Cor uh, Coriolis force. You, so when you're uh, reading different books and so on, please uh, pay attention uh, to what, uh, uh, what what people have decided about where they want minus signs. I, I prefer actually uh, to leave them like this. So I'm always going to try to remember this form where all three of these terms are uh, uh, positive. Uh, the one I'll get to at the very end is is not. Um, so the three additional terms that came about because of the rotation of uh, the coordinate system, uh, the first of which uh, results only if the angular velocity vector is changing with time. The angular velocity vector could be changing with time if, the, uh, if that non-inertial frame's rotation was speeding up or slowing down. Uh, if the angular velocity was changing, uh, the, the, sorry, the angular speed was changing. Um, and the other way for that vector to change is if the direction of that vector would change. Uh, e either of those would be um, an angular acceleration, and, and that would uh, result in a non-zero cross product for this term, uh, which is uh, called generally the azimuthal force. I believe Landau and Lifshitz calls this the Euler force. Um, but this term will be zero if the angular velocity is constant, and that is a spectacular approximation for the Earth. Uh, the angular velocity is indeed constant in direction and magnitude, so this force is not going to affect any sort of uh, ballistic problems uh, for projectiles uh, on the surface of the Earth. But it is a term that results uh, you know, from this same derivation. 
Uh, and, and if if the velocity vector was changing, you would need to do this a cross product to figure out the magnitude and direction of that force. And if you didn't, then you would not see the correct motion in the rotating frame, which is what you want. So you need to pay attention to all all of these terms if there's rotation going on. The second of which is the Coriolis force. Uh, you, you need to note that that has a V in it. So if the object is not moving in the rotating frame with respect to the rotating frame, then then V is, is zero. And that cross product would be zero. The Coriolis force would not exist. But any object uh, that is moving in the rotating frame will um, will bend in weird ways according to the people on Earth. They won't understand this force um, if they don't know the Earth is rotating. It'll, it causes um, bullets to veer right. Um, you can see this with bullets because they're going very quickly. And, and as I just said, there is a V in there. So this effect increases for things that are going very fast. It, it also uh, uh, causes uh, the counterclockwise flow of um, of the air around low pressure systems um, in, in weather. Uh, the third term is the centrifugal force. Um, it exists even if the object is at rest. It, it is uh, given by the this double cross product with the angular velocity vector. Um, but because of this angular velocity vector, uh, because of these two uh, cross products, turns out that um, this force is zero at the poles. Um, so these uh, three terms uh, here uh, result from uh, the non-inertial frame uh, rotating with respect to the inertial frame with a rotation uh, given by that angular velocity vector and possibly uh, a time derivative of that given by that thing. Uh, that's for rotation of the two frames. Uh, if uh, uh, in contrast or in addition, uh, the uh, frame is also linearly accelerating with respect to an inertial frame. That would also make it not inertial, uh, linear acceleration. Uh, that would uh, cause uh, 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 additional pseudo force, um, which is pointed in the opposite direction of the rotation of the frame. So as we worked out uh, before, if we're in a train car and uh, we don't know it, the windows are closed, but the train car is accelerating uh, in that direction and we had a pendulum, we would see the pendulum. Uh, its equilibrium position would would not be in the direction of gravity anymore. Uh, it would be um, pushed to the left um, uh, with respect to this force, and the minus this minus sign indeed makes it the to go in the opposite direction of this acceleration. So uh, if you have uh, some kind of uh, a spinning lazy Susan on an accelerating train car and uh, you want to calculate the motion to someone who's on the lazy susan and rotating with the lazy susan and in the accelerating train car uh, you would need all of these terms um, and so you would you'll have to get very good at using your right hand rule and uh, yeah indeed that'll take some practice to figure out the directions of all these vectors uh, but once you figure out the directions of all these vectors then each of these cross products is is just a contribution to the force and, and you end up then with a slightly different force, um, which then modifies the, um, the resulting motion of the object. Okay, so I hope I explained it a little bit better this time. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions uh, or want to see any other video, just let me know. Okay, take care.